Abyssal Hand by turn two. That's going to be tough to deal with. He's also going to be very reliant on rare candy with two of those Curly and the prize cards. Definitely not what you want to see right off the bat, but hey, we'll see how he can work with those prizes. In the meantime, we see an Ultra Ball coming over on Naota's side. Uh, very possible that we're going to see the classic Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, Bridget. Yeah, Nyoto does get to go first, which is always a big advantage in these matchups, especially now that we have the reintroduction of evolution Pokemon to the metagame. There was a while where basic Pokemon were the focus of pretty much every deck, but now with the introduction of Pokemon GX, we see evolutions coming back into the mix. And when you go first, you put down your Pokemon first, you get the first opportunity to evolve your Pokemon, and it gives you a big advantage. So here we do indeed see Tapu Lele being the target of this Ultra Ball. Wonder Tag is one of the best abilities in the game. We've seen it in the past with Jirachi EX, but never to a Pokemon that's this competent on its own. Uh, just being able to search for a supporter out of your deck. The ultimate consistency card that we've just seen all throughout the season since it was introduced. And combined with Bridget, it's just an incredible consistency start. Yeah, I do want to talk about Naoto's deck a little bit. Coming into the weekend, we... We knew there would be plenty of that Garboder. trash Lanch has been dominant in the standard format ever since it came out just a few months ago. And then there were rumblings of maybe Golisopod GX is good as well. But there weren't many people thinking, hey, what if we combine both of them? Why and not that both? has turned out to be an incredible combination this weekend. I would say Diego's deck, a little more standard. Uh, sure, it is a new concept, but it is one that almost everyone had in mind. Uh, Gardevoir GX just stands out as one of the most powerful cards in the latest expansion. And, well, so far it has lived up to the hype. And this matchup is certainly interesting, too. I feel like there are different advantages both players have over each other. One of the big things that Golisopod really thrives on is being able to attack for just a single energy card, which does limit the damage output of Gardevoir GX quite a bit. But Gardevoir GX also has the ultimate sort of ace in the hole to deal with Garboder by shuffling all of your item cards back from your discard pile. Yeah, Nyoto did start off pretty much how he wanted to with that Bridget on the first turn, but Diego did not. He just had to play N as his first supporter, and they, that may cause him to struggle a bit. You can see he has one Ralts in hand, and he has Rare Candy and Ultra Ball, but he knows if he only has one Ralts, Nyoto could simply play Guzma, knock out the Ralts, and Diego wouldn't have anything to evolve. So instead, looks like Diego is going to Ultra Ball for a second Ralts here. Or uh, maybe yeah, another maybe. Uh, basic Pokemon. But he needs more than one Ralts in play to prevent uh, getting kind of blown out by a turn to Guzma. That's tough. At this point, too, uh, maybe was even considering Octillery at one point because uh, he can play his hand down and draw some more cards. Immediately going to realize that it's in his prizes. Uh, we'll probably realize about the Curly as well and maybe start uh, feeling a little unfortunate about the rare candy he had to toss. And it looks like the Pokemon Diego is selecting is Alolan Vulpix. Now, we saw in the senior division, Alolan Ninetales GX ended up winning, and Alolan Vulpix was a big part of that puzzle using that beacon attack. And in fact, it is so strong that some decks just play the Vulpix. For zero energy, you get to search for two Pokemon and put them into your hand. It's incredibly powerful in these evolution decks. We first saw it in the Metagross GX deck a couple months ago, where players were just using Alolan Vulpix to set up, and Diego has adapted that to the Gardevoir GX deck as well. Yeah, uh, I couldn't believe when this attack was first printed. I thought I sort of read it wrong. Like I thought Beacon would get you one Pokemon. <laughs> the fact that it gets you two is just huge. And uh, like here, here's an example where Diego didn't have an energy to commit, but it's one of those nice Alolan zero energy attacks. Indeed, so it looks like Diego is eyeing up perhaps a Gardevoir GX and definitely needs to take Tapu Lele GX. I think he discarded his only supporter, uh, probably assuming Octillery was in his deck but it is in his prize card, so now he has to kind of change course here and take the top of Lele GX instead of maybe taking Octillery that he would have instead. So all we really see here is a uh, one Ralts, one Tapu Lele. Diego definitely playing a few turns back than what you would normally see with this kind of deck, and it's definitely going to give Naoto a great opportunity to grab knockouts. Indeed, right now, Diego a little slow, but his deck can kind of afford to be slow. Uh, Gardevoir GX is an incredibly powerful deck uh, in the late game. Once you snowball a bunch of energy onto Gardevoir GX, you start getting one-hit knockouts with that infinite force attack. It's just, can you get there? 
Can you evolve all of your Ralts into Gardevoir GX? This is a big opportunity for Naoto to knock out this Ralts before it can evolve. So Naoto, uh, trying to look at the pieces that Diego had to discard. Always need to know what your opponent's resources are at any given point. Also important to know for Garboder and Trashalanche how many items are in the discard pile at any given time. So we see the Grass Energy attached down onto the Wimpod versus Seeker so that he can replay this Sycamore. Well, he does have to give up a decent amount of energy here. Uh, that could be relevant in the late game. Uh, one Grass, one Rainbow gone. He's got to be digging for that Golisopod, grabbing knockouts and Floatstone as well. Yeah, it looks like he might not be able to get a knockout on this turn. At the very least, Diego has to breathe in a sigh of relief, knowing that Rolz isn't getting knocked out. He could get Rare Candy and Gardevoir GX on his second turn. But we do see Floatstone. Is there a Golisopod GX to go with this? Yeah, I don't know if I see it. Uh, we do see oh. the Garbotoxin Garboder, which is that going to be just about as bad. Uh, he won't be able to play Tapu Lele from his hand. Uh, he's going to be locked out by Garbotoxin. Indeed, that's a big play from Naoto, locking out abilities with that Garbotoxin. Now Diego needs to top deck a supporter card, otherwise he might not be doing very much on his second turn. Yeah, if you're Naoto, you certainly would like to be uh, more aggressive, but oh. Oh, versus Seeker off the top of the deck, that's just the card that Diego needed. Oh, even field as the blower field as well. Blower. So that can actually re-enable the abilities. And now he has a choice of either any support he wants from his deck or one of those N uh, from the discard pile. Yeah, that's a good question. Which one do you go for? Uh, I think Professor Sycamore makes sense. You draw seven cards instead of six in this situation. Sure, you have to get rid of a Versus Seeker, uh, but you were having to effectively play Versus Seeker regardless. So draw the extra card off the Professor Sycamore. Uh, Diego noticed that his opponent didn't play Galisopod GX, didn't have an Ultra Ball, so why give him new cards to work with? Uh, draw as many cards as you can, try to set up your side, and don't give your opponent any help here. The Dream is a rare candy Gardevoir, but if not, some Curlia down would also be a big help. It doesn't look like he got any rare candy. I see just Ultra Ball, so that could be a way to start uh, going for Curlia. But Although, it remember, be unsafe. he does have two Curlia in his prize card, so... Those rare candy are going to be precious resources, and he already discarded one. He only plays three in his deck as opposed to the normal four. So it might be hard for him to come by those rare candy as the game progresses. Now, this is going to be a very risky position for Diego. He's right in that Guzma knockout uh, portion where I'm assuming he's going to grab a Carlia here and evolve and just hope that he can get Gardevoir. Either that or uh, just finding any way of trying to count the candies as well that he has remaining. There's Curlia, but it's the only one in his entire deck. Yeah, and that just has a massive bullseye on it. Uh, if Naoto is able to find Guzma and go after that Curlia, you have to think he's going to do it. Take out that Curlia before it can evolve. Your opponent has not shown that he has access to rare candy. Uh, obviously, Diego would have Ultra Balled for the Gardevoir GX in that scenario if he had the rare candy in hand. So uh, number one thing on Naoto's mind has got to be Find that Guzma, knock out that Curlia. Yeah, and I, you can see him just looking through his deck, trying to see his remaining candies. Ups to grab Gallade off of this Alolan Vulpix. Uh, maybe even a card that he feels like he could throw away with the Sycamore later, as well as another Ralts. Might as well. Uh, you have to get Gardevoir out at some point. You pretty much can't win in this matchup without it. Yeah, Gallade is pretty interesting, even though it has a weakness to Psychic. Uh, if you just don't have many item cards in your discard pile, uh, Gallade actually matches up well against the Trash Alliance Garboder. Sensitive Blade can hit for 130 damage, enough to knock it out in one attack. And uh, with only like two items in your discard pile, you won't be hit back for a knockout in return. And it has enough HP to survive against Golisopod GX and that first impression attack. So maybe Gallade could be a star in this matchup. So here we see replacement Floatstone coming out from Naoto. He has double colorless energy. I don't think he has access to Guzma, though, uh, so this Carlia actually may survive. Let's see, double attached to the other Wimpod versus Seeker. And it looks like it's going to be versus Seeker for a Sycamore. Carlia should be safe. Yeah, and we'll see if he's able to find that Golisopod GX this time. If he does, surely he will retreat and knock out that Alolan Vulpix. But now Diego has gotten, you know, a couple free passes here. Ralts was vulnerable the first turn. Curlia is vulnerable the second turn. Uh, both times, Diego able 
to avoid this situation, and now he'll be able to evolve into a stage two on his next turn. This is exactly what he wants to see. And here we do see Golisopod coming out Naoto side. That first impression attack, only 30 damage, normally for one energy, but if you come up from the bench, 120, there's an easy knockout on a low limb Vulpix. And there we do see first prize card taken here in the finals of the Masters Division. Naoto taking the first lead. Can Diego respond? So Diego throwing up the Tapu Lele, maybe hoping to do some damage here with it and then finishing off with Gardevoir. But I believe we will see the first Gardevoir of the game on this turn. Do you see Guzma going right after that Trashalanche Garboder? If Diego has Gallade and Double Colas energy, he can get the knockout. But no, he's actually just going for the Gardevoir GX. And he could either use Infinite Force or use that big GX attack, Twilight GX. Yeah, uh, let's see. How many items does he have in the discard pile? Looks like five. Yeah, uh, so there's actually 11 cards in his discard pile. So uh, he would leave one there and shuffle the other 10 back into his deck. And so it gets rid of the items for Trash Lance long term. It also uh, gets back crucial resources. We saw uh, with the Curly Apprised, he may just really want rare candy back in. Oh, yeah, that's certainly something to watch out for. It's all right, 12 cards in the discard pile. So Twilight GX allows him to shuffle 10 of those back into his deck. A very powerful GX attack. Uh, it doesn't do damage, doesn't draw you cards or anything like that. It recovers resources and allows you to shuffle them back into your deck. And so there we see it's Twilight going back into the deck, and all of a sudden there are zero items in Diego's discard pile. So it sort of puts this trash lanch Garboder in the active position in a weird spot where it can't really deal damage. Yeah. And looks like I was wrong yet again. There were 13, 13 cards. There's always <laughs> one more yet. Opting not to grab the Tabulele or the uh, Alolan Vulpix, but uh, putting all the items back in. Open yeah, and that's why Gardevoir GX was considered a great counter to the Trash Alange deck. Uh, you do need to play a bunch of items to set up, but it's the only deck that can really remove item cards from its own discard pile. Uh, you can essentially counter the Trash Lanch attack by just shuffling those items back into your deck. Right now, a Trash Lanch attack does zero damage. Yeah, uh, that is not very good. That is <laughs> not usually what you see. This is a Pokemon known for dealing over 200 damage in the end game. But in the early game, it's kind of a liability. And we have seen Naoto go through a couple of float stones. The third one drops uh, over on this course of the game. So we'll be able to retreat it and start applying first impression damage. And uh, if you're Diego, you want to do everything you can to get a replacement Gardevoir as soon as possible. This deck truly shines when you have multiple copies of it. Yeah, Diego actually doesn't have much in his hand. There's no supporter card to play. Uh, he was making decisions on which cards to shuffle back into his deck with Twilight GX. Which one would give him the highest odds of drawing something good. He left one supporter in the discard pile in case he drew a versus seeker. Then he could just grab the supporter back and dump his hand, draw a fresh hand of seven, but otherwise shuffled in uh, all the other supporter cards and anything else that could help him. So here we see a free retreat off of the float stone. First impression up in the active spot. It can deal a little over a uh, half of Gar Gardevoir GX's HP. And wow, Hex Maniac going to shut off any abilities yeah, now there's not even Garbotoxin. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, isn't Garbotoxin already in effect as well? Yeah. Just uh, trying to make sure that even if there's a field blower, he will have an ability lock this turn. Yeah, and if you don't have any other supporter to play, why not just dump it out of your hand? Uh, that way you don't draw it later on in the game. And I noticed, oh, so here we see an N. Uh, that's one way to shuffle and get some new cards for Diego. Uh, big thing, as always, is looking for rare candy, Garbo uh, Gardevoir. Yeah, that was a huge top deck for Diego. He had no supporter in his hand, and now he's going to get a fresh hand of six cards. He does have Gardevoir GX with one energy on it, but he's in kind of an awkward spot. Uh, he can use Infinite Force for not nearly enough damage, and then if Naoto has, like, an Acerola, he can simply pick up the Golisopod GX, replay it, and then first impression for a knockout, and Diego will lose... His Gardevoir GX, Nyota will take two more prize cards, and Diego really won't be anywhere. Uh, he has no real setup beyond this active Gardevoir GX. Once again, we see Gardevoir, but no rare candy to connect. And those two Curlia being prized, really hurting Diego. He would love to just Ultra Ball, grab another Curlia, set himself up for a Gardevoir GX in the next turn, but those prize cards are really killing him here. 
So coming back over to Naoto, we've got a heavy ball, which we've shown uh, actually searches for a good amount of Pokemon in Naoto's deck. Big one, I would imagine, is a second Golisopod coming down. And if he has Acerola, he'll be able to sort of open that revolving door of Golisopod where you're just removing any damage, keeping yourself out of one-hit knockout range. That, uh, like, when you have over the classic 180 hit points on a Pokemon, I feel like it just makes you very hard to be knocked out. Absolutely. That's what we're seeing a lot of this weekend. Now, Nyoto, he can get a knockout here on Gardevoir GX, but he needs something. Uh, a double colorless energy would allow him to use Crossing Cut GX for the knockout. Uh, a, an Ace Roller would allow him to pick up that Pokemon and then evolve his benched Wimpod into Golisopod GX, then retreat and use First Impression for the knockout. Uh, he has a lot of different ways to get a knockout here, but he needs one of them. Uh, if Golisopod GX simply stays there and doesn't get any additional energy, it cannot get a knockout here. And that's maybe one of the things I dislike the most about it is you sort of have to always have a constant combo piece in order to deal that huge damage. We'll see if Naoto has access to one. It does require constant maintenance, and yes, he does find double colorless energy. So we'll see if he decides to use that one-time GX attack, the crossing cut, to get a knockout. Yeah, and it looks like he's actually uh, just going to Sycamore away. I think he did have a Guzma option, so you can always Versus Seeker that at another point. Getting a big fresh hand. Has attached uh, an energy, I think, every single turn. He's in a good spot. Yeah, he's got everything he wants. He's got Garbotoxin in effect taking away Gardevoir GX's Secret Spring ability, which is really a big piece of that strategy. You need to attach multiple energy in a turn to power up that infinite force attack. He's got all of his evolutions in play already. He's got a bunch of energy. Right now, Naoto has pretty much every advantage in the book. Even Diego's prize cards are helping Naoto. <laughs> oh, here we see a choice band coming down. Could actually now get the knockout without a GX attack. Yeah, he can go for the armor press. The only downside is uh, it's actually kind of nice when you're able to switch with your GX attack, uh, sort of leaving your one Pokemon that may be able to be knocked out for two prizes on the bench. Yeah, it's also nice to have the GX attack late in the game too, though. Uh, these, you see the Tapu Lele GX on Diego's side. At any point, Naoto could simply crossing cut GX with a choice band to get a knockout on that 170 HP Pokemon GX. So he wants to keep that option open as he does take two more prize cards here with the armor press. Diego needs to respond very quickly here. Otherwise, this is just going to snowball out of control. I'm trying to think, can he even collect the knockout? Uh, well, in the rare situation now where there's three energy on the Golispod GX, it actually helps quite a bit. But again, it's been every single turn. Can he candy Gardevoir? He has not candy Gardevoir once this game. And I feel like the only way that he can win is if he can, at least once this game. Yeah, Diego needs Rare Candy, Gardevoir GX, and Double Colorless Energy on this turn to get a knockout, uh, or a, a Fairy Energy plus Choice Band. He could also go with Tapu Lele GX. It's going to be a little more difficult, though. Um, right now, doing 80 damage. Need to do a lot more. So here we see Ultra Ball. And, like, normally last turn, that Ultra Ball just would have been used for Curlia, and he could respond with Gardevoir right now. But because they're in his prizes, he has to find an alternate way around. Another thing that's tough is the Octillery being prized as well, although that ability lock has really shown itself to be very strong in this matchup, uh, coming over from Naoto's side, being able to get that Garbotoxin active very soon and replacing the tools has made it tough for Diego to even do things like uh, Top of Lele Wonder Tag. Yeah, I think Diego is deciding where he wants to attach this double colorless energy. Uh, if he goes to the active, he needs a choice band to get a knockout. Uh, if he goes to the benched Ralts, he needs Rare Candy Gardevoir GX to get the knockout. He's just got to figure out which one gives me the best chance here, the best odds to find this knockout, because it's a big one. Uh, if he misses, that Kalisopod GX is still fully powered, ready to use either of its attacks. Well, all three of its attacks, if it really wants to, but oh. namely that crossing cut GX and Diego's committing to the active. He needs to find choice band here. So here we go, seven cards. Does he get the band? Let's find out. Candy Gardevoir helps, but right now he is committed. He needs this knockout right now. Choice band or bust. He gets it. He gets it. And, and Candy Gardevoir. Wow. 
That's everything he could have wanted. All right, why not both? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he would have preferred, I mean, if he if he knew he were getting both of those, he would have preferred going for Rare Candy, Gardevoir, GX, but, uh, I mean, he'll take it. <laughs> so now coming back over to Naoto's side, he uh, can respond with a knockout here if he gets Choice Band and an Energy to do the uh, GX attack, but otherwise, uh, Diego hoping that he can hold on and uh, prevent his opponent from taking a knockout so that he can start working with Gardevoir. And we just see we see just why Tapu Lele GX is so powerful. Uh, it gets used as a support Pokemon for that Wonder Tag ability. But right there, came in for a giant attack as well with Energy Drive. It's just such a versatile card, and uh, can be used in so many different situations. Certainly, oh. a game-changing card. And it looks like one of those Curlia that have been prized for so long was picked up from Diego on that last knockout. Octillery and the Octillery as well. And I wonder. Uh, do you risk leaving the Tabu Lele up here just because you can hit for such heavy damage, or do you just start piling up on Gardevoir and hoping that you can retreat? Yeah, I think we certainly see Tabu Lele GX leave the active spot this turn. Uh, prize cards are at a premium at this point in the game, and Diego needs to be denying them whenever he can. He also does play Ace Arola in his deck, so maybe down the line, if that Tabu Lele GX makes it through a couple more turns, he can play that Ace Arola and pick it up off his board and remove that easy two-prize knockout. And a big thing we haven't seen over from Diego is the ability to use Gardevoir's extra energy attachments. Yeah, the that ability would, to yeah. use abilities. Yes, the ability to use abilities. He's being locked because of a different ability from Garboder. Uh, he already played one Field Blower. I'm trying to see uh, how many copies of it he runs. If he'll, it looks like he's got two, so he would have the opportunity to do it again. And he also shuffled it back in the deck from Twilight as well. So that's a, a big card, I think, that could help a lot. Yeah, this should be a pretty decent turn from Diego. He's figuring out if he wants to use Guzma, and looks like the answer is yes. He's going right after that Golisopod GX with the double colorless energy on it. And he's going to use infinite force here for 120 damage, setting up for a two-hit knockout. He's going to hope that his opponent doesn't have an Acerola. Yeah, it's not a terrible option. We've actually seen a, a ton of grass energy being committed from Naoto, either to the discard pile or to Pokemon that have already been around. Oh. See if he gets another one, but he does have Ace Arola. That is tough to deal with. Indeed, so that Golisopod GX and all cards attached to it go right back into Naoto's hand, effectively wiping out that attack from Diego. And this is one of the cool parts of this strategy. You get to pick up your Golisopod GX, promote something else, uh, and you know, you get to send out the new Golisopod GX and get the bonus damage from first impression. Uh, two new supporter cards work beautifully with Golisopod GX, both the Ace Arola and Guzma. Yeah, and it sort of just erases Diego's entire turn when he isn't able to get these one-hit knockouts. And Gardevoir GX is a Pokemon that can sort of accelerate and get a ton of energy and actually knock out even 200-hit point Pokemon, but it's uh, just pretty slow to work with right now until you can get rid of Garbotoxin. So there we see 120 damage coming from the Galisopod, first impression. Here we see Diego eyeing up this Gallade and playing a really big N here. He's going to put his opponent down to three cards in hand, and Diego will get four. Uh, I wonder if Diego is looking for a double colorless energy here so he can retreat and use Sensitive Blade, use a one prize attacker instead of a Pokemon GX, and uh, has 150 HP, so it's actually... Kind of difficult for Golisopod GX to knock it out unless it uses that GX attack. So here we'll see uh, what Diego can get. Only getting four cards of his own. Has used a couple of double colorless energy already. Does not get the double. Does get the field blower, though. Yeah, he can field blower away those two float stones, or at least one of them, and gets his abilities back. Garbotoxin is no longer in effect. That means he can use Octillery's Abyssal Hand and Gardevoir GX's Secret Spring ability to get some extra energy out. And so all of a sudden, uh, he's going to be able to draw a lot more cards. Looks like he's going to play the Super Rod here. He is slowly sort of playing back up his item count. Could yeah. make uh, Garboder relevant in the end game. But I think if you're Diego, he just wants to draw as many cards as possible here and uh, oh. open himself up to either a knockout or a way to get these uh, two prize knockouts in out of harm's way. Well, the Trash Lynch might not matter. Naoto only plays four Rainbow Energy as ways to power up Trash Lanch. Three are in the discard pile, and the fourth one is on the active Golisopod GX. So unless he finds an Acerola 
to pick that rainbow energy back up into his hand. He can't even attack with Trash Lanch anymore, and Diego is free to go wild with his item cards. So with this uh, opening of abilities, I feel like we'll see the very first uh, ability from Gar Gardevoir getting this fairy energy down. Yeah, I think it might go to Gallade, or you can actually Premonition too, that's great. Yeah, Premonition is an excellent combination with Octillery. You get to look at the top five cards of your hand and rearrange them, just like the old Pokedex card. <laughs> but uh, Octillery allows you to draw cards straight from your deck right off the top. So you can sort of make sure that when you use Octillery, it's only getting good cards or getting the best possible cards out of a uh, pretty wide selection. It also gives him information so he knows where to attach this fairy energy with the Secret Spring. Uh, he sees no double colorless energy in the top five, so if he wants to use Sensitive Blade, he has to attach the energy to Gallade. So knowing your top five cards informs your decision. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going for, even as a replacement field blower uh, coming up in this next turn and could finally sort of like put this Garbodor out of reach of continually doing Garbotoxin. Two energy on the Gallade, it's only a one prize attacker. Sensitive Blade dealing a respectable amount of damage for two energy cards because a supporter was played. And we'll see if Naoto can respond. Does he find that crucial Acerola for the turn to once again scoop up that Golisopod GX and perhaps get a knockout with that Trash Alanche attack? Because it would give him that rainbow energy. Yeah, this but, is, that's the only way he can attack with Garbodor for the rest of the game. Right. And there it is, Acerola one more time, scooping up that Golisopod GX. And we'll probably see a trash alanche here for the knockout on the Glade, thanks to weakness. But I have to wonder, how many energy cards has Nyoto gone through? Yeah, we've seen a lot of grass already hit the discard pile, a couple of rainbows being burned through. He needs one of those two cards. Uh, the double color synergy on its own doesn't really power Garbodor. It doesn't really power Golisopod. It only really works with Tapu Lele on its own. So I wonder if we get uh, deep into the game and hit something like a late game N, if this trash Lanch Garboder gets knocked out, uh, does Naoto have any additional responses? Yeah, he did get the float stone down onto that Garbotoxin Garboder one more time or one more time, so abilities are turned off once again. But in the top five cards for Diego, there was his second field blower. So he can regain access to his abilities. And we might see a turn where he needs to uh, secret spring one energy onto his Gardevoir GX. Uh, and then play N and hope to draw double colorless energy to finish off this Garboder. Yeah, it's a, it's a dangerous play. Your Gardevoir uh, already has a decent amount of damage on it, but at this point, you sort of have to just play out, uh, what can I do to give myself a chance to win? Knocking out Garboder is certainly step one. So I have to think Diego won't attack with this Tapu Lele GX. Uh, he could simply attach the energy to the active and energy drive for the knockout, but then all Nyoto would need is a grass energy or a double colorless energy to attack with either Galisapa GX or Tapu Lele GX of his own, and that would be game over. So I think Diego just promoting Tapu Lele GX, saying, hey, I, I'm going to retreat. I don't ever plan on attacking with this thing again. Uh, this is kind of my pivot Pokemon where I can choose which Pokemon to retreat into. Yeah, I almost feel like I may just want to go in full desperation, just throw up the guard of war right now. Uh, and that way maybe you can keep the two doubles on the top of Lele for later. But guard of war is really going to be your end game finisher. So it's probably just the safest play. And just trying to play out cards that he won't need to be bothered with. He actually has Acerola as an option as well. Yeah, he is going for that. Looks like he's actually going to promote the Remoraid here. Perhaps just saying, hey, uh, I'm going to take this turn off and hope you don't have anything. Man, that is a uh, pretty scary option. He's already played Acerola, so that's his supporter for the turn. And just going to pass. Does Nyoto have a Guzma and Grass Energy in hand to win the first game here in the finals? I don't think there are enough item cards to get a knockout with that Trash Lanch attack on that benched Gardevoir GX. I think he's 10 short right now, if our indicator there is correct. But we could see a choice band that could increase the damage for Trash Lanch. But he's got a float stone. Yeah, he's got to do the field blower <laughs> play where you sell field blower. We haven't seen that uh, all weekend. We've talked about it a lot. I wonder if it will ever become an option. But that would be the way to do it uh, if you're Naoto. And I wonder uh, what he actually has to work with in his hand. I know he's been very short on energy. 
It looks like Diego just made a very calculated play there. He uh, looked through how many resources his opponent has gone through already and said, yes, it is possible for me to lose here if my opponent has Guzma and a Grass Energy for Golisopod GX or some crazy combination of Field Blower, Choice Band, and all this stuff. Yes, I can lose next turn, but that is very unlikely. So I'm going to set myself up to have a better chance to win in future turns, kind of take this turn off, and maybe my opponent takes this single prize knockout and I can end him down to one card and give myself a good position heading into the late stages of this game. And actually, uh, I really respect this decision. It was uh, seemingly dangerous at first. It's certainly less aggressive, but sometimes not attacking is sort of your best option. Here we just see the Sycamore coming over from Naoto, so I don't think he'll be able to close the game on this turn, but he could apply a lot of pressure. Indeed, does he find any energy? Uh, he finds the Field Blower and Choice Band. I don't know if I see an energy. Yeah, no energy in the top seven for our Japanese player. He can simply trash a lanch for the knockout on this Remoraid, but then he leaves himself open to that dangerous end to one card. And maybe that's just not a spot he wants to be in. Yeah, I wonder, uh, maybe Naoto's answer is something conservative of his own and just sort of trying to preserve the Garboder, hoping your opponent doesn't have Guzma and the energies. And I wish we could see in his deck, see if there's actually any energy left. <laughs> yeah, there aren't a lot of cards left in his deck, period. Look at that. It's not really cutting a deck. It looks like it's cutting a hand. <laughs> the deck's yeah. all in the discard pile. This is where you need to bust out that tech Team Rocket's handiwork. <laughs> just mill for the game. <laughs> like, oh, I'm trying to get a count of the energy. There are just so many in there. Doubles, too, even. Like all those grass, rainbows. Let's see if I can get a count. Grass, rainbow. Yeah, he plays three grass and all, four rainbow. All three grass are in there. Oh, that's yeah. every energy then. That rainbow is his last one. Wow. Uh, he won't be able to use Golisopod GX at all if Diego is able to knock out this Garboat around the bench. And, you know, deck lists were posted online last night. So both players have exact counts of all the cards in both players' decks. So Diego might know exactly how many energy his opponent is playing and might understand, oh, if I just get rid of that last rainbow energy, I win. Yeah, uh, the only attack that Naoto will be able to do is a, maybe a double energy drive yeah. uh, on Tabu Lele. And I think Gardevoir could still get a knockout while remaining out of knockout range. Uh, you need, close. Yeah. yeah, you need three energy to infinite force for the knockout. That does open you up to the double colorless choice band energy drive knockout since Gardevoir only has 110 HP remaining. So that would be a risky play, especially knowing that your opponent has almost all their cards in their hand. Yeah, uh, I guess the biggest thing if you're Naoto is uh, you've sort of put your opponent in a situation where if they end you, they're not knocking out your Garboder. And I, I think we're having a discussion here. I don't know if there was a, like an order of operations. Hopefully we can get some more information here soon. As always, both these players, uh, when they don't speak each other's languages, we go through translators to help explain some additional situations. Yeah, we do have our translator, Bryson, on staff to help interpret for the judges and the players so we can resolve this issue. But uh, in the meantime, we'll continue to look at this exciting finals matchup here in the Masters Division. And if you're watching, use that hashtag, play Pokemon on social media. Tell us who you think is gonna win this epic finals match here at the World Championships. Will it be the Golisopod GX deck for Naoto, or will it be Diego and the Gardevoir GX? And at the start of the game, it looked like Diego was kind of out of it. He had to make a lot of suboptimal plays had to very slowly fish Curlia out of his prize cards, even had to go up with the Gallade. Uh, so it hasn't been a very Gardevoir-heavy game, but you can see Diego's done everything he can to sort of deny his opponent from finally closing the game with two prize knockouts. That Acerola ended up, I think, being a pretty big play earlier, and it looks like Naoto's just going to pass. Yeah, I like that play. Um, Naoto, clearly an intelligent player, got all the way to the finals of the World Championships, understands he cannot risk that rainbow energy. He can't risk his last real attacker in this situation. He, he needs to wait until he can get uh, a Guzma for the game-winning two-prize knockout. He doesn't need to knock out this one-prize Remoraid and put himself in danger. And so once again, Diego looking through his opponent's discard pile, trying to count resources. It looks like there are two double colorless in there. 
And there are three run in Naoto's deck, so that would sort of be his uh, his closing energy. Uh, maybe his last energy in the entire deck. But uh, Field Blower is going to get rid of these Float Stones. Most importantly, that's going to get rid of Garbotoxin. Yeah, and, um, you know, getting rid of that Float Stone, Diego might also be looking at how many Guzma has my opponent played? Maybe that Garboder could be trapped in the active spot and my opponent could deck out and lose. Yeah, uh, that's totally an option as well. We see uh, he's actually eyeing up the Acerola, maybe just trying to deny any two prize knockout at all by picking up Gardevoir all the way up. Attaching to Octillery just in case he doesn't get trapped. <laughs> Following up with an Abyssal Hand. Here's Acerola, so that's getting rid of the two prize knockout. Maybe sort of goading his opponent into, hey, uh, how about you bring that Garboder back up and only take one prize? Yeah, Diego doing everything he can to deny his opponent the win here. Uh, every resource is crucial here in the waning stages of this first game. There's the double colorless energy from Naoto. Might be the last left in his deck, attaching it to the Tapu Lele as sort of a way to close the game out later. Oh, and here's boy. Versus Seeger. We're probably going to see Guzma here. What will it go for? Going for the Ralts. So Naoto saying, hey, I can apply a lot of pressure. Oh, but that's big. He can attack with Tapu Lele GX and not put that rainbow energy in danger on that trash latch Garboder, forcing Diego to have a lot of cards to make this work. Uh, he would need oh, so much stuff. And we even see the choice band going on to that Garboder. So Garbotoxin back in effect as well. Naoto doing everything he can. And oh my goodness, this last prize is his final rainbow energy unable to draw it out of his prize card. So these really are all of his energy. He needs to win with what is on board. Coming back over to Diego, Guzma pulling Ooh. up the Garb Odor. If there's no additional Guzma, or, uh, I don't know if Naoto has a way to move it. Oh my goodness, is this Diego really panic. how this is gonna end? Yeah, we've, we've seen deck out situations happen in the seniors. Will it happen in the masters as well? It's all about this. The choice ban on that Garboder. I think all float stones are gone. Are all of the Guzma and Versus Seeker gone as well? If Nyoto has one more Guzma, he can move that Garboder out of the active spot and win the game with one more Trash Alanche attack. If not, Diego might steal this game. And Diego passes. Let's see. Does Nyoto have it? Is it left? Is there a Versus Seeker or a Guzma in his hand? There's I don't see it. Tabu Lele, no bench space. He can That's see it. That's it. Locked out. Garboder taken out in the active spot just by sitting there like the lump of trash that it is. Incredible play by our Argentinian player. Diego takes game number one, snatching away the victory from his opponent. Wow. I mean, that is world-class play right there. Uh, it looked ugly for that entire game for Diego. He had the two Curly prize, the Octillery prize, had a really rough start. He had to make so many strange plays just to simply not lose. And then at the end, found his one way to kind of lock out his opponent and beat him by running him out of cards, trapping that Garbotoxin Garboder in the active spot with Guzma and just incredible. That's yeah. all you can say. There are three win conditions in the Pokemon trading card game, at least normally. But the third one is by far the least remembered and the least popular. And that's if your opponent goes to draw a card on their turn and there's no cards left in their deck, they lose. They deck out. And Diego, realizing that that third win condition was his most likely to win, played conservatively turn after turn. He kept a close eye monitoring his opponent's resources, realizing where energy cards were no longer available to Naoto to attack and he just denied his opponent the win until all of a sudden he could no longer win anymore. Yeah, it's funny, after Guzma came out, people were saying, oh, those situations just don't happen anymore because you just always have Guzma or Versus Seeker to get it back and you can just switch your active Pokemon out and there's no really, there is no real concept of your, or your Pokemon getting trapped anymore. But there is when you've used all of your resources. Uh, there are two Guzma and four Versus Seeker for Naoto, and over the course of the game, all of them hit the discard pile. And uh, Diego, a very intelligent player, recognized the situation and said, I got it. It looks horrible. All I have is Ralts and uh, <laughs> Remoraid and Octillery uh, against your board of Galisabod GX everywhere and Garboder. 
and a Tapu Lele GX powered up. But it doesn't matter. Your active Pokemon is the one that needs to attack, and it could not, and Diego takes the game. That was by far one of the least impressive offensive wins I think we've <laughs> ever seen over the course of this entire tournament. I think Diego was able to take maybe like one knockout over the course of the game. He barely had Gardevoirs out. He sometimes had Gallade. He just kept getting hit with Acerola. But it didn't matter because by doing that, by playing these large HP Pokemon, by playing his own Acerola to take the prize cards off of his side of the board, he just denied his opponent over and over again. And if game two is anything like game one, this is going to be one of the most exciting finals we have in the Masters division ever at the World Championships. Uh, we've had a lot of interesting matchups in the past couple years, but uh, a lot of blowouts as well. Uh, last year, that Mega Odno deck kind of cruised to a quick victory. It was destruction. And uh, then we had that Archie's Blastoise deck from Jacob Van Wagner, another very quick victory oh, in was, the finals. That was even this. worse destruction. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have an incredible matchup here, kind of a more methodical pace. And oh, both Guzma in the prize cards Ooh. for Diego. Prize cards not being kind to Diego in this finals. He'll be able to set up, but he won't be able to get sneaky knockouts that often can determine the game. Or, as we saw in the last game, leave your opponent's last active Pokemon stuck. And so uh, Naoto starting the same way he started last game. Tapu Lele GX being able to search the deck. Bridget is not prized, so he will be able to get three additional Pokemon under the bench and set up. Yeah, perfect start for Naoto. Two games in a row. He's going first. He gets to Wonder Tag for that Bridget. Get three basic Pokemon down onto the bench. Uh, if he has an energy attachment, that'll be a perfect turn one. And so here we see, uh, just trying to see what's prized in his deck. And uh, I don't think he had any energy prize, any energy cards prized this time. He had to discard a handful of them as well early in the game with the Sycamore. And that really ran him out of resources. I don't think you'll run into those same obstacles this game. Indeed. Uh, we see a cool card coming out from this Bridget that Tapu Koko uh, really works well in this Galizapod GX deck. You see Wimpod has that ability Wimp out. During your first turn, it has no retreat cost. So if you start with Wimpod, you can Bridget for Tapu Koko and retreat into it. It has no retreat cost. So next turn, you can evolve to Galizapod GX, retreat for free, and get the bonus damage from first impression. Over on Diego's side, we see a Bridget of his own, not even needing to play the Tapu Lele, uh, which is nice. There is no Garbotoxin in play yet, so any ability that he can drop as soon as possible is going to help him quite a bit. Yeah, much better start from Diego in the second game. Uh, first game, all he could do is play N on the first turn, only got one Ralts into play. Uh, you know, he had the double Curly prize, just a rough opening in pretty much every sense. But here looks like we're going to see him set up a little bit better. He has access to Octillery this game. One Remorade is prized, but he does play two Remorade and one Octillery. So that's going to work out for him. We may just see that first turn beacon from Diego searching for two Pokemon and putting them into his hand. Yeah, Diego opting to run all kinds of consistency Pokemon. He has the Diancy, which can allow you to evolve your Pokemon. He has the... Alolan Vulpix, which can search out for Pokemon from the deck. And he also has the Octillery, which allows you to draw additional cards at a very cheap cost. Looks like he's just opting to go for an army of Ralts here. Yeah, I mean, Ralts is your most important Pokemon to get down. Uh, it's, it's weird. Pokemon GX are enormous. They have lots of HP. Ralts and Curlia, though, are not. <laughs> uh, Ralts is 60 HP. Curlia with 80 HP. They're very easy to knock out. So... You need to get a bunch of them out because you assume your opponent can play something like Guzma and knock out one of your basics. So then you need more to evolve up into. Uh, the more routes you have, the more opportunity you have to evolve into your big bad Pokemon GX. And we did see at least one rare candy being held in Diego's hand. So grabbing Gardevoir GX saying, if my opponent doesn't have an N, I'm getting a Gardevoir out on my second turn. We're not going to have a disaster like the last game. Uh, I may be able to play more aggressively this time. Yeah, it kind of presents a strange situation to your opponent where you beacon for Gardevoir GX and you're saying, hey, I have rare candy. Uh, you can play Guzma and knock out one of my Ralts, but if you do, there is a Gardevoir GX coming. So it kind of has this 
situation where if Naoto plays Guzman, takes the knockout, a Gardevoir GX is sure to come. If he plays an N, he can't knock out one of the Ralts on the bench. So just a great situation to be in if you're Diego. Yeah, it sort of sets up this trap. Uh, none, of the, none of those choices look great for Naoto. Sure, he's going to be able to do what his deck does best, be aggressive, take prizes right away. But it's sort of uh, walking into this like big stone wall of Gardevoirs in the late game. So there we do see Galizabod GX hitting the field. There's Garbotoxin Garboder, no tool attached to it yet, but off of this fresh hand of seven on Naoto's side, I would not be surprised to see a float stone. Indeed, seven cards. Does he find a Pokemon tool? I don't actually see one. It didn't right away. We do see the Trubbish coming down. It's got a couple of different energy options. May just have to come up and take a knockout and let Diego sort of run free with abilities. Yeah, this was kind of the worst case scenario for Naoto. Uh, he did not play an N or a Guzma. So not only does Diego get to keep all of his Ralts, he also gets to keep the rare candy Gardevoir in his hand. So we're certainly going to see a turn to stage two GX coming into play this game. And yes, Naoto will be able to take a quick knockout here with this first impression, but he's going to be under some pressure right back. Yeah, this is a sort of a weird spot to be in. I don't even think he has something like a choice band yet. Uh, just getting no tool at all to work with on that last turn and sort of prevents him from getting that big stoppage that we saw last game. He's got the damage, but he doesn't have the spice. So there we do see retreat and first impression. Naoto gets the first knockout in this game as he did in the first game. But here we go, Rare Candy, Gardevoir GX for Diego. He's off to a much better start. Curlia down, Remoray down, double colorless energy down, and Sycamore for a new fresh hand of seven off of that. And you can see the crowd starting to get pumped. They've seen Diego as a top competitor for a while. Oh boy, I saw another Rare Candy in hand. Octillery, uh, but he played the Remoray down this turn. Yeah, he needs the fairy energy and he finds it can use that Secret Spring ability to attach the Fairy Energy. And now we can see an infinite force attack for 120 damage. Not quite enough for a knockout, but uh, it's going to force his opponent to have Acerola. And uh, if he doesn't, I mean, he'll just get an easy knockout. But it also puts him in range to attach another Double Colorless Energy and a Choice Band and knock out a fresh Golisopod GX on the next turn. Yeah, this is the scariest spot to be in in this matchup. You know there's literally nothing your deck can do to knock out this Gardevoir GX at this point of the game. You have to take two hit knockouts, but it is a scary time to be looking at Gardevoir GX. It got this big in one turn, and it can just continue to grow into this monstrosity as it is left to remain uh, over on Diego's side. Plus, in this game, we could actually see two Gardevoir GX working at the same time. And Nyoto does not have Acerola in hand. He's ultra-balling away some cards, and I think he's just going to play Professor Sycamore on this turn. So he'll either need to find Double Colorless Energy to use Crossing Cut GX and move this Golisopod to the bench to keep it out of danger, or a Float Stone. But he needs to draw something off of these seven cards. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a tough spot to be in. I think that last turn, not missing the ability to block Diego's abilities, is very big. And now he still needs to hit a couple of different pieces. I would imagine that he hits it off of the Sycamore. He's got a couple of different options, uh, like Flow Stone and another energy, a double colorless energy. Yeah, plenty of stuff to draw, he and he plays four Float Stone, so very likely to at least draw one of those. He would like to draw one for his Garbotoxin Garboder as well. So big seven cards. For Naoto, does he find what he needs in this situation? You got to think without Garbotoxin, Diego will start to overwhelm with those Secret Spring abilities and Abyssal Hand. So it looks like he has the double colorless out. I actually don't think he got a Float Stone just from the limited view that I have of his hand. Wow, did he miss again? That's insane. He runs the full four copies, right? Yeah. And that's uh, just something that can happen in the Pokemon trading card game. Sometimes you can just miss the cards that you need at a crucial time. This will deal damage and allow uh, Naoto to sort of escape to the bench, but it puts him in a rough spot. Diego's in the driver's seat this game. It certainly looks like it. Naoto can use his one-time GX attack, crossing cut GX to do 150 damage and then switch into, I assume, Tapu Koko. Uh, or he could armor press for 100. That doesn't seem nearly as impressive. Uh, doesn't even set up for 
a knockout from first impression unless he finds a choice band next turn. And uh, then clearly his Galisaba GX would get knocked out. So there we see the GX attack, 150 damage and switching to the bench. And we'll have to see if Diego has access to something like a Guzma. Uh, he does have access to abilities and we know he has Octillery in hand. So I'm sure he'll be playing a lot of cards down, uh, trying to draw more. Hey, if Diego has Guzma and then a stage two and energy to attack, he can go right after that Galisapa GX and take a two prize knockout. But no, he's going to be the one using Acerola this game, clearing off the damage from his Gardevoir GX. And now he can promote a new Pokemon powered up and yeah. saying, hey, Naoto, two can play this game. And he's got the rare candy in hand. He had it. He wasn't able to get an additional Gardevoir, so why not just rare candy this new one in the active? He has a Curlia down as well, so he could get a new Gardevoir if he's able to draw into it. I assume that attachment was off of the Secret Spring. Yeah, and I assume we're just going to see the Twilight GX from Diego here. Uh, he cannot do enough damage with infinite force to get the knockout on this Tapu Koko. So he might just use this turn to shuffle a bunch of those item cards back into his deck. And so there we see uh, Rescue Stretcher just shuffling Vulpix back in. Uh, yeah, so I think he's going to Abyssal Hand for more cards here. Yeah, and I think he's just doing that so that when he uses Twilight GX, he can just shuffle Rescue Stretcher back in. Uh, doesn't want to be burdened with that in his hand in case he has to Sycamore and discard his cards. And this is sort of the strength of Twilight. It makes the, the trash Lance attack almost entirely irrelevant. Uh, it just gives you so much extra time and so many more items to work with. Oh boy, here comes another Gardevoir GX. And he finds the Gardevoir, but not a second Fairy Energy. So he cannot use Secret Spring a second time to power up that infinite force for a knockout. And that makes me think for sure we're going to see Twilight GX this turn. And so here, Diego realizing that he can be a little more reckless with his items if he wants to. Going to do a quick count. So can I Ultra Ball and throw all these items away if I'm just shuffling them back into the deck? Uh, let's make sure. How many cards do I truly want to be back in the deck and how many cards do I not care about? Poor Bridget. <laughs> He's like, well, Bridget's great in turn one, but I don't want to see that again. Yeah. Maybe I want to keep Acerol in there so I can verse a Seeker for it. But just deciding, you know what? Uh, I'm going to Ultra Ball. Yep, we're going to see him Ultra Ball, probably just for another Ralts if it's in there. Uh, if not, he might grab nothing, honestly. Or uh, just like an Alolan Vulpix and put it into his hand. I guess Curlia yeah, works as well. I think it may be a Curlia. He just played this Ralts down to the bench, but it just gives you another way to sort of slowly start building back up. It's just uh, such a different game for Diego. This is sort of his usual game plan. He's not as unorthodox as last game where he was sort of uh, just scraping by here uh, while he is a little short in hitting all the energy that he wants this is the setup you want and here comes twilight back to back gx attacks here we're seeing pokemon gx take over the world championships here in 2017 a big difference here now in the sun and moon era as we see 10 cards from diego's discard pile being shuffled back into his deck such a powerful effect all those resources back in and trash a lanch back to doing zero damage. And we've seen cards that shuffle back into your deck. Uh, and while certainly there, there are some really crazy ones, so crazy that they're not even legal anymore, um, this is the closest equivalent to that. Being able to shuffle 10 cards from your discard pile back in, that really resets the game, uh, either for just reusing resources or just getting all items out of there, making that uh, trash a so much worse. Hey, Naoto drew a float stone. Look at that. Oh, just in time. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, so we'll see how he'll follow up on this turn. There's a fully powered Gardevoir GX staring right in front of him. Uh, trash Lanch is not an option. Will he simply attach an energy to the Galisopod GX with no energy on it and use first impression? I think that makes the most sense. Uh, force your opponent to have a lot of resources to knock out this Pokemon GX and set it up for a two hit knockout. Yeah, uh, probably seems like the safest bet on Naoto's side. You're sort of just at the mercy of your opponent. Hopefully they don't continually have access to uh, dropping these abilities. If uh, Diego has something like a field blower and a way to draw a lot of cards, it's gonna be very hard to deal with. Indeed, I know one of the last cards in Diego's hand is Versus Seeker. So at the very least, he can get back that Professor Sycamore and draw a fresh hand of seven cards. Here we do see Galisopod GX coming out first impression. And right now, 
The infinite force attack is doing, uh, looks like 150 damage. So if we see a double colas energy, it will be a knockout. Yeah, he needs two more energy in one way or another. And there's Professor Sycamore. Here we go, uh, digging for something like a field blower to draw more cards, the double right away so you can get a knockout. Maybe even another Gardevoir. Does he find double colas energy though? He's got it. And field blower. Wow. Oh, and I think he has two fairy to drop two as well. This could be a massive turn for Diego. We could see Field Blower, double Secret Spring, powering up the bench Gardevoir GX, double Colorless Energy on the active Gardevoir GX. And you can see why this card is so powerful. It went from almost doing nothing last turn to knocking out a 210 HP Pokemon GX in one attack. And this is going to get scary for Naoto very quickly. Yeah, Diego can kind of go crazy this turn. Uh, he's going to dump a bunch of, if he wants to actually uh, just get rid of the Garbatoxin right now, he can dump a bunch of cards out of his hand, Abyssal Hand, draw more. And even though uh, his deck is very, uh, <laughs> normally we say you thin the deck, I guess his deck is very thick right now, <laughs> full of cards, he shuffled it back in, he's able to draw through it so quickly. So here we see, here comes the Field Blower, getting rid of that Float Stone, abilities are back online, Secret Spring number one. Secret Spring number two. Oh, just going straight into the Abyssal Hand. Hmm. Yeah, he can Secret Spring one more time, but no, looks like he just used the one and is getting the knockout there with Gardevoir GX. Diego taking two prize cards, taking the lead in game number two, something we did not see at all in the first game. Yeah, this is a, a very different game. This is sort of the Gardevoir deck at its finest. It is an offensive powerhouse. You did not get to see that at all in game one. But look here, look how many energy are on Diego's side of the field, even opting to not attach an additional one uh, on that turn. And he's just able to power up Gardevoir, get huge knockouts. And here we see teammates coming out of Naoto's side to respond. Yeah, this is an awkward turn for Naoto. Uh, he clearly needs to knock out this active Gardevoir GX. You cannot let it sit there with five energy and use infinite force in consecutive turns, but you need to do 110 damage to knock it out. Your options for that, put a double colas energy on Tapu Lele GX and go for the energy drive, but then that opens you up to double colas and choice band on Diego's side, responding for an infinite force knockout in return. You could attack with your Glycopod GX, but it's clearly getting knocked out by the other Gardevoir GX. I think the other option would be Field Blower, discarding the Choice Band, and then put a Choice Band onto your Trash Lanch Garboder, and you can actually do exactly 110 damage, getting the knockout, and not putting your GX in danger. But looks like Naoto going is going right for that Tapu Lele GX. Went straight for the Lele. This is very dangerous, but he is able to pair it at least with uh, turning Garbotoxin back on, so it eliminates the ability for Diego to sort of uh, double color synergy and attach another energy uh, from hand. Makes you wonder uh, why you chose to withhold that second uh, Secret Spring attachment. Yeah, maybe just forgot about it, or maybe we missed something. It's always, very possible. Always a possibility. Yes. Uh, one thing this does do, I mean, Naoto will get the knockout here. He'll go down to three prize cards as this game is heating up. But if Diego could find Guzma this turn, he can target down Glycopod GX, go down to two prize cards, and then all he has to do then is knock out that Tapu Lele GX for the win. We'll see what options he has to work with. That's tough. He has Versus Seeker, but I don't think Guzman was something that he left in the discard pile. I don't even know if he's played a... Gu oh, both his Guzman were in the prize card oh, at the beginning uh, of the that's game. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was able to draw them at all off of his prizes. I don't think uh, so. So without that option, it's tough. Uh, you can try and dig for the Choice Band. I think there's maybe only one left in the deck. Uh, without abilities, it's weird. You can try and dig for the Field Blower. We'll see where he opts to go. Looks like just one energy onto the Curlia. Not getting greedy here. Diego just saying, all right, let's play the N, disrupt my opponent a little bit, and just hit for 90 damage this turn. Go for a two-hit knockout. Yes, I could find the choice band off of this N to four, but it's not very likely. And patience has been a virtue for Diego here in the finals. Game number one. I mean, that was all about patience. Hey, that was the most patient play I have ever seen. I, it's so tempting when you see, oh, I could take a prize here. I could get knockouts here. I can stop my opponent's last attacker here. But instead, he sort of found that alternate way to win, uh, just showing what a great veteran of the game that he is.
Yeah, he does find a glade off of those four cards, but does he, he even want to play it? Band. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you can't count on that, but it is yeah. just funny that it happened that way. So here we see uh, infinite force for 90 damage. Yeah, with those Guzma in the prize cards, that actually makes this late game scenario pretty tricky for Diego. Uh, he, it gives him less control over the match. I mean, there's no way for his opponent to know that there's no Guzma available to his opponent, but now he can play this game where he can retreat between Pokemon and just have a field full of heavily damaged Pokemon, and Diego can never really capitalize. We'll see what Naoto can do. He did get end down to three cards. He might not have many options. Yeah, that is, uh, he does have Sycamore in hand, so he could go through a lot more cards that way. He has a Float Stone if he wants to retreat and preserve energy. Yeah, he might attach to the Wimpod, uh, then put Float Stone in the active, and go for Professor Sycamore, and try to find another Glycopod GX, or he could trash a Lanch here. He's eyeing that up. Nope, going to put the energy onto Wimpod. Yep. Will they put this Float Stone anywhere? It probably might. goes somewhere before the Sycamore. Yeah, it might even be better to discard the energy with uh, when you retreat so that it's not an easy target for a infinite force later in the game. So we see a Sycamore. I can only assume looking for that replacement Glycopod uh, so that you can bring up the mostly fresh one with only one damage counter on it. Otherwise, uh, you can see his board is getting a little scary. The second Diego's able to get a knockout, there's a very high percentage chance that he picks up the Guzma that can close out the game. But until Diego has the out to Guzma, it does open this weird situation. Did Naoto find a Glycopod GX? I don't know if I see one in his hand. No, it looks like just energies and other pieces, so he's going to have to either uh, just throw up a Pokemon that he's okay with getting knocked out, or take this risky oh. play. Wow, this is probably going to open it up for Diego. His last two prize cards, or his next two prize cards are going to be a big one to look at. Looks like he is going for the first impression here for 120 damage. Um, and setting up for a two hit knockout with a future Glycopod GX, but now Diego can simply attack and get the knockout. If he can power up one more Gardevoir GX or even Glade at this point to go after that Tapu Lele GX on the bench for the last knockout. He could be our world champion, but there's a lot in his way before that can happen. He has the option to throw a choice band down if he wants to. Going to attach it to the Curlia. Sycamore away, drawing seven new cards. We'll see if he gets things like field blowers, like additional Gardevoirs, like energy. And Diego not going with the Gallade. Wants to find that last Gardevoir GX, and there it is. Finds the other stage two. He's also got double colors energy to continuously power up this Gardevoir GX. Diego might be on his way to becoming our world champion. The big thing I'd want to see is when he takes this knockout, does he pull the Guzma out of the prize cards? Yeah, we'll have to be ready on our prize cam. A knockout is sure to come at the end of this turn. Looks like he's going to attach energy. Oh, he's actually going to preserve his Gardevoir GX. This is a really intelligent play. Force his opponent to have Guzma to take this knockout. And here we go, two prize cards. Did he find that He's, Guzma? He has at least one. The full art one remains, but his non-full art copy is in his hand now. So this presents an awkward situation for his opponent. If he plays Guzma and goes after the benched Gardevoir GX, he can take the two prize cards, go down to one, but then Diego just needs a Guzma of his own and an energy to knock out that Tapu Lele GX and win the world championships. Uh, this. So if now to plays anything other than N, it is basically game over. Yeah, the only thing I feel like that can save him is something like Acerola. Yeah, Acerola as well. would be the other it, thing. And but, he plays N, so that is going to take away Diego's option and Guzma. Uh, we'll have to see if he can either somehow find it in this large deck or find something like a field blower and a Tapu Lele. He's in a good spot, but Naoto doing everything that he can to get out of it. Yeah, this is where Garbotoxin is a major player late in the game. Uh, there is nothing more disruptive than Garbotoxin and N late in a game. You put your opponent at a low hand size and take away their abilities so they can't use things like Octillery's Abyssal Hand or Tapu Lele GX's Wonder Tag. Uh, Diego's going to need to find something like a Field Blower or a Supporter Card to kind of keep up the pace here in the final stages of this game. 
And you can see a bunch of cards bumped over on Naoto's side. I can only imagine the nerves. This is the <laughs> end. Someone's about to become a world champion. Indeed, and here comes the trash -alanche. Looks like five items in the discard for Diego, so this will be 130 damage. That's a two-hit knockout. And what did Diego get off of that N? Normally, Octillery being the N saver, but uh, when it's shut off, you can still get N to a low hand size and get hurt. All he has is an N of his own. He can attach an energy somewhere and N. Man, what a tense situation. Uh, Diego can play this N. He has the fairy energy. He can either attach it or he can end and go for the double Cullis energy, and that's what he's going for. Off of these two cards, can he find double colorless energy to infinite force for the knockout on this Garboder? If he doesn't, man, it looks like Nyoto is in firm control. Yeah, that end really shut him down. The only other thing I think that could open it up is a field blower. Indeed. And there's two a cards. one energy and a super rod. That's a tough spot for Diego. Not what you want to see. If you are Diego, so now what does he do? Uh, certainly you want to attach this energy. I think it's probably going to go on the benched Gardevoir GX, but this is not a pretty spot to be in. Uh, it this... seems like he was crushing it, but this is the power of N. Yeah, and Garbotoxin. Uh, if Diego had abilities, he would oh. simply use Abyssal Hand and refill his hand. But here, I think just attached to the bench, he's got an infinite force for just 60 damage, and he'll get knocked out by that trash -alanche. and Naoto is in firm control. There's the Ace Arola as well. Oh, that's taking away Diego's easy two prize option now. Now the question is, does Naoto have a Golisopod GX to go with it? Clearly his Garboder is going to get knocked out, and if he can find one last Golisopod GX, he can win the game with the first impression next turn. This is coming down to the wire. Naoto down to just one prize card. Field blower off the top of Diego's oh. deck. This could allow him to field blower, abyssal hand, find his way into an N. Uh, that's probably the number one card he would have wanted to jump off the top. Wow. What an incredible top deck for Diego. This is going to make this game much more exciting. Yes, so there we go. Uh, Garbotoxin is now shut off. Yes. Now the question is, do you play this, uh, do you play this rod before drawing so that you can draw five cards, or do you not play it so you draw four cards, but the four cards does not include three cards you shuffle back into your deck? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting choice. We'll see what Diego decides to go with. Yep, just deciding to grab the four cards here, top of Lele. There it is. There's some energies, so it should have access to the end. Yeah, as long as they're not all in his discard pile, he should be able to wonder tag, find that crucial N, and perhaps a world championship winning N. So here we see, oh, he's so close. He could have maybe even opened up some situation where he could have just retreated and attacked with Wonder Drive, but he just has the double in hand. Is there an N in his deck? We'll have to find out. I do there see is. at least one. I'd recognize that carousel anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the wind, what do you call it? Save me here. <laughs> Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There it is. Oh, I want to get off N's wild ride. <laughs> this is too much. It's only the beginning, Josh. The end to one for Nyoto. Oh, this is as close as a game of Pokemon can get. This is only the excitement you can get at the World Championships. Diego is going to play this N, put Naoto at one card in hand. And let's see, we see Super Rod as well. Uh, he's actually trying to put himself in an even better position. So he's going to Super Rod, he'll play the N. If he can draw a Fairy Energy off of these two cards, he can Secret Spring to the active, retreat, and then Energy Drive, and then make it so that Naoto can virtually do nothing to get a knockout on his next turn. Yeah, it would put him in a pretty difficult spot. He would need something like the Evolution and the Guzma. So here's the end. Diego drawing two cards, his opponent drawing one. Diego wants to find a Fairy Energy here. If he can, he can retreat. If he misses, all it takes is Golisopod GX and Nyoto ties up this series one to one. So can he get the Fairy Energy here? It's a big two cards for Diego. Oh. Does not get it. And the question now is, what did Naoto get on his side? Do we see the Glycopod GX? Tapu Koko is up. He has two cards in hand. 
Does he have a way to draw cards? Does he have a way to evolve? He's left sitting there thinking. Oh my god. That goodness. may signify the end. He passes. He just passes. Oh no. <laughs> He's looking at the discard pile. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> the crowd debated. <laughs> Normally, when someone makes that motion, that means your uh, turn is over. He's saying, Oh, there's oh, the no, pass. Oh no, it's the real pet. Wait, is it? Is it? Yes. Okay, okay so Diego pass. needs energy and double colors, or just a Guzma. Energy drive. Wonder tag. Or so, <laughs> uh, Wonder tag. Does he have the Guzma? Guzma. There it is. That's the game, Diego. Go, Diego, go. Diego Casiraga is your 2017 Pokemon TCG World Champion. What an incredible finals match. Well played on both sides. A heartbreaking defeat for Naoto, Ooh. but what an awesome win for Diego. He's been playing for over a decade at the World Championships. This is his third top eight, and now he can say he is world champion. Congratulations. And both of those games, absolute nail biters, coming down to cards drawn off the top of the deck. That field blower was everything for Diego. If he doesn't get that, Naoto shuts him down, then we get into an intense <laughs> sort of sudden death situation. Uh, Diego just pulling the one card that he needed, truly part of cardsing him way, his way <laughs> out of it. But you could just see the way he played both those matches so intelligently, so passively. He was able to conserve resources, win in ways that we didn't even think were going to happen. Yep. What a world championships. Indeed, what a world champion. Uh, patience was the word of that matchup. As we saw in game number one, Diego clawing his way back when it seemed like he had no way out. And in game number two, not getting greedy, just playing steadily throughout the game. And it paid off for him. He is now our world champion. Man, that might have been our best world's finals yet. Yeah, and normally you'd think, well, it's not a good world's finals if it doesn't go to three games. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> those two games were so tense. Both players had a huge opportunity to win at both sides. There were so many interesting things that went along, specific prize cards being pulled at the right time. It all came together to make this sort of perfect storyline. Uh, over the years, we always see new competitors that are young to the game, but still ready to become world champion. And we always see players that have been playing forever. Diego's been playing this game longer than I have <laughs> and is still a relevant competitor over the years has cemented his name as one of the best to ever do it. Indeed. It looks like Gardevoir wins worlds again, Josh. Uh, it is a familiar sight here in Gardevoir the Pokemon wins. TCG. <laughs> LOL, Gardevoir wins every time. Uh, but a new generation of Gardevoir. We have Gardevoir GX. Man, what an incredible match we just saw. And uh, you have to wonder going forward if this will continue to be a dominant deck in the standard format for next season. Uh, we saw perhaps the two big decks heading into next year, Gardevoir GX and then the Trashalanche Garboder with Galisopod GX. Some cards were getting kind of a preview of the future, I think. Absolutely. This is sort of the uh, start of a story to come. This is sort of our first look at Burning Shadows.